I'd wake up at 5 a.m. I'd set my alarm clock to wake up that time so I could make Skype calls to Australia. I studied international business management. A couple of months of cold calling, I learned more valuable skills from that than I did in my entire degree. I have people who ask me about business and who are in jobs like I was, and I'm almost always trying to tell them that they should go into the agency model. I was in a pretty sad state because I knew that I wanted to do something different. What I loved that I learned from you is just focus on selling. Sell something first, you can figure everything else out afterwards. Hi, it's Alexander Itkin and I'm here with Phil Williams. He's a current member and a former student of Business Mentor Insiders from 2014 and 15, if I'm not mistaken. And since then, he's gone on to build an e-com empire, you could say. And uh, in one year, he did eight figures in revenue. So I know everyone here wants to know, but how successful was he? Well, that's how successful he was. And Phil has a very interesting life. He organizes parties. He's uh, traveling the world, been traveling the world for a long time. He's built his business empire over the last, well, more than five years already. So welcome, Phil. Thank you very much, Alex. So <laughs> always have to hand it over. So don't worry, that part is going to get edited out. We don't want to look awkward on camera and I would be. So Phil, how did you start your business? Like, What happened? What was going on in your life and what has led you to start your business? When I joined uh, Business Measure Insiders, I was in a pretty miserable place in my life. I used to work for the BBC and I was a TV producer and I was not a great employee. I was not made to work for somebody else. Yeah. And I was in a pretty sad state because I knew that I wanted to do something different. Mm. I knew that what I was doing at the time, although it sounded cool being a TV producer for the BBC, although it sounded great, it was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I was, uh, I think I was 32, 33. So I was very conscious of the fact that if I didn't make a change soon, then I was gonna be doing that for the rest of my life. Mm. So I felt kind of hopeless and I felt like I didn't have direction. I felt very confused. And I also felt pretty sad because I didn't know how to solve the situation that I was in. Mm -hmm. So it was at that point that I came across business mentors and I got introduced to you through a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of got me started because that was the problem at the time was how to get started what I should be doing. I really had no idea. I was very directionless. So that gave me a start. I started mm -hmm. trying to use the skills that I had as a TV producer to sell videos to different businesses. So I started out doing cold calling and it was hard. It was hard. <laughs> I remember, yeah. Yeah, it's not, cold calling is not fun. Uh, it's no surprise to say that, but it really is not good. But at the same time, I learned so much from it, so much about communication, about personal skills, about resilience. And quite frankly, I'm so happy that I started doing that because when you start off doing the toughest thing that you can maybe do in uh, the world of entrepreneurship, everything else is easy afterwards. Mm -hmm. I regularly think to myself about how I used to wake up in the morning before going to work. I'd wake up at 5 a.m., I'd set my alarm clock, to wake up that time so I could make Skype calls to Australia because I knew that around that time of day, the time difference was just about right that I could call businesses in Australia that time. Mm -hmm. So I think back to those times and whenever I think about that, like now I'm smiling, mm -hmm. it makes me happy because I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> but what a great experience. And I learned so much from that, from, doing something that's really difficult. Mm. And so I'm so glad that I started out doing that. And those skills, they still serve me today of just cold calling, communication, speaking to people and selling. Uh, I know that those have really helped me in the last five years and I know that they're just gonna keep compounding. They say that if you don't know what you're doing, that's the hardest period for you while you don't know what you're doing, to keep persisting and to stay motivated, as they say, and to keep that discipline. So when, you, when you're basically struggling and, as they say, flailing your arms around in the air, not knowing what you're doing, uh, most people, they tend to give up when that happens after maybe three, four months. But what made you persist with business and what made you succeed with business eventually 
uh, regardless of uh, the hard period, like those months where you were cold calling and it was really tough? Well, when you talk about how people can't get started and how they flail, one of the things that helped was that you gave me, you said to me, do this. Mm -hmm. You said, uh, create videos, sell videos. And to be honest, I wasn't really that convinced at that time, but mm -hmm. when you're used to working in a job and you don't really know what to do, one of the big differences when you have a job is that you're used to being told what to do and being given the pieces. Mm. So at that point in my life, I needed that. You, you gave me, you said, do this and do this. So I worked at that and it was tough. But you asked what eventually led to me making things work. And I guess, I guess it's um, desperation. Mm, okay. Desperation because... I didn't want to keep on doing what I was doing. Again, as I said, I was 32, 33 years old, and I was very cognizant of the reality that if I didn't make a change soon, that I was going to be doing that for the rest of my life. So I kind of think of myself like that scene in Indiana Jones, mm. where he jumps through the, the doorway that's coming down, sliding down, and he grabs his hat. Yeah. I kind of think that I was a little bit like that when it came to getting out of being an employee. I just made it under that door. I grabbed my hat on the way out because a few more years and I would have been, I would have been doing that for the rest of my life. Hmm. So I really wanted to make it work and I'd spent a lot of years thinking about it and I'd tried various things, but I just really knew that something in my life had to change. So that was what kept me going. It wasn't inspiration. It wasn't motivation. Hmm. It wasn't even belief. It was just not having a choice. So eventually you got into e-commerce and then ever since then your business has been growing. But what people probably don't realize is how incredibly hard it was starting with e-commerce, right? So in the first two years, I remember you were doing, I, I don't even know what I can say about this, by the way, because I remember you had, um, you had to get money, you know, to invest in the e-com store. Like, I don't know how much you want to talk about that, but it, it lasted two years where you basically couldn't even take money out of the business. Right. Yeah. And then had to invest more and more and more and more with a risk that you'll never even see anything in, in return. So, so how, how did you persist through that or how did, how did that process go? You're right in e-commerce when you're selling physical products, like I am, and I was at that time. It's not like when you're in a service agency type business that you take money in and you can make a profit immediately because mm -hmm. when you have physical products, you have to put money into the inventory. And so it's a cash flow game. It was difficult because I was not a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. I was a journalist. Uh, I didn't even know how to use a spreadsheet. I had no idea about formulas, anything mm -hmm. like that. So for me, one of the really important things was learning to adapt and to get better at those very, very strong areas of weakness that I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had a Spanish teacher in Guatemala many years ago, and she told me this Spanish saying. She said that she had been very weak at grammar, teaching Eng uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. So she said her mother, a grandmother said to her, ponlo debajo de brazo, which means put it under your arm. Yeah. So I often remember that. She said that she took that approach to learning grammar and she studied it and she put it under a microscope. She really focused on it until in the end, she said that grammar was one of her most strong points as a teacher. So I think of that when I see something that I'm weak at. And I was very, very weak at running a business. I was very weak at numbers. I was very weak at data. I was very weak at all of these kind of things. And I was, to be honest, I was incredibly lucky. Mm -hmm. I was incredibly lucky that I got through with the amount of skill that I had at the time because I had very little idea about managing cash flow. I didn't know what a P&L was. I didn't know what a profit and loss statement was, a balance sheet. I didn't know any of that stuff. Mm. So a lot of it was luck. Um, some of it I would say was also randomness. It was being in the right place at the right time and being able to get through it unscathed. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that really helped me was reinvesting the money that I made back into learning and growing mm. and getting better. But you're right, it was it was difficult to do and it took a lot of delayed gratification to not, you turn over a lot of money, 
and maybe you're making some money, but that money had to go back in, go back in. And I'm very glad I took that approach. I had one Christmas in particular where I put a lot of money down. It was a huge amount of money to me um, for stock for Christmas time. And I was very scared. I spent months being very worried about that, trying to figure out how I was going to pay it all. I had to borrow money from my parents. Mm. And it was a very, very scary time. And I remember one weekend, I thought it was in, it was in November. And it was one of the big weekends. It was Black Friday. And Black Friday didn't go the way that I'd hoped. Ooh, okay. So I had a big deal and it didn't sell so well. And I remember sleeping, not being able to sleep that weekend, thinking like, what's going to happen now? I owe money to my parents. I, um, I'm not going to be able to sell this stock. I'm going to have to go and get a job. And I spent the whole weekend worrying about it. Mm-hmm. And then on Monday, I had another deal and I managed to get uh, move a lot of stock. And from then on, my Q4, my, my Christmas period went really well. And that investment, that risk that I took paid off hugely because the business grew. It went to another level. I made profits and then was able to invest more. And I was I was very fortunate. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a mixture of luck and fortune and um, crossing your fingers and just trying your best. So if I'm not mistaken, that was about three and a half years ago, this exact moment, right? Uh, 2016, late 2016. Yeah. So how has it been going since then? So you basically had a breakthrough Q4 2016. Yeah. And then it was maybe the first real profit at that point, if I'm not mistaken. Or, or did you reinvest all the money again into the business even then? Or, or what happened sin- between then and now, actually? Well, there was a lot of growth. But one of the things that happens in all businesses is that you grow. And especially when you have no business experience, I had no business experience whatsoever, mm. is you create a mess. So as we grew, um, we didn't have any systems in place. We didn't have any kind of organization and we didn't have reliable financials, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was a period of growth followed by a period of basically trying to get our act together. Mm -hmm. So I was very fortunate. I made some very good hires and brought in some very good people who helped to organize things and put things in place and make the business way more robust. And also I learned a lot in the process because as I said, I was flying by the seat of my pants. I had no experience. I didn't know what I was doing. I was turning over a considerable amount of money, but I knew nothing about keeping it. I knew nothing about cash flow. I knew no- I had no idea if I was making a profit. All I knew was that I was taking out a minimal amount of money to, to keep me going. But other than that, I didn't really know a whole lot. I didn't, I wasn't too sure whether I'd be able to pay my suppliers. Mm. I had no idea about profit margins, anything like that. So that period from leveling up at that Q4 afterwards was all about learning about business, learning the business fundamentals. Mm. And I think that's, that's the thing that was the most important. That's the thing that I needed to learn at that time because I was just so weak operationally. What, what is life like now? Cause I think since then things have progressed quite a bit it's been it's been many years so what what is it like now running your business and what does your life look like now my life now um i realized the other day that i should stop calling what i do work mm. because work suggests that you have to do it and i realized the other day i had a saturday where i didn't need to do anything but i just went down to a coffee shop i went with my laptop I put some music on and I just started brainstorming, thinking of ideas. And I realized this is what I love. Mm. This is what I love. And I don't ever want to stop. And I don't see a time when I won't be working in this kind of thing. My day to day is um, morning routine and working in the morning, going to the gym, getting something good for lunch. Uh, Oftentimes I'll have meetings in the afternoons and I try and get a good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. It's nothing too crazy when I'm, when I'm in one place, 
but I still spend a lot of time traveling, learning, um, meeting people, networking, going to events, all of those things because organizing events, organizing, organizing some get togethers as well. Yeah. But I've realized that I don't ever want to stop growing. It's mm-hmm. very, very important to me to keep growing. So there's not going to be a time when I'm just, um, staying the same. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be in growing, investing, learning more and going to new levels. I have new projects that I'm working on now, which I love, and they're gonna be new challenges for me, new things that I'm gonna learn, and it makes me excited. It really makes me excited, and it's great going into new projects with a little bit of experience. Mm. (laughs) A little bit of experience with a team, with knowledge, and um, being able to put what you've learned in the past into into action. Would you still recommend that people get into the agency business model? And if so, what are some transferable skills that you've gotten from the agency to what you're doing now? Do I, would I recommend people go into the agency model? Uh, Not only would I, I do. I have people who ask me about business and who are in jobs like I was, and I'm almost always trying to tell them that they should go into the agency model. Why? Because you don't need a lot of money to do it. You don't need a lot of time to do it. You don't need a lot of anything to do it. You can do it in your spare time like I did, in your holidays, on your weekends, in your mornings, in your evenings. And I think that the main thing a lot of the time is just to get started. So that was the great thing that when I came to you, you gave me, um, you gave me the thing that I should be selling and you said, just go make phone calls. Mm-hmm. And what I loved about that, the, the biggest transferable skill from that was just to get started, to not worry about the details and to think about things like accounting and bank accounts mm-hmm. and building your own website. I hear that from people all the time. They focus on the wrong things. What I loved that I learned from you is just focus on selling. Sell something first, you can figure everything else out afterwards. Mm-hmm. Focus on the most important things. So. That was a massively transferable skill and it still serves me to this day because I don't think that I move very fast. I think that I'm slow. I think that I'm really, really slow. I'm working on new projects right now. I'm frustrated. I think that I'm glacial. Mm -hmm. But other people who see me say that I move quickly. I I don't agree with them. I'm saying this right now. I feel like a fraud, Mm -hmm. but I feel like I move very slowly. I just want to move faster, faster. And I think that a lot of that comes down to the mindset that when I started out that you taught is to just get something out there, get moving. Mm. That's how I started in e-commerce because I didn't start out with an elaborate product. I started out with the most basic, Mm. um, least fancy product that I possibly could. I just got it online. I just got it selling and then I- A brown box. (laughs) A brown box, yeah, Yeah. nothing fancy. I just got it selling. And when that worked, I spent more time and more money into improving it afterwards. But when it comes to transferable skills, I think it's pretty hard to launch any business and not have transferable skills. Like I studied international business management for my degree and I learned more in a couple of months of cold calling and selling videos than I did. I learned more valuable skills from that Mm -hmm. than I did in my entire degree. That's for sure. So any business that you start, it's impossible not to start it and not to pick up transferable skills. Mm -hmm. So agency model. Yeah. I I wish that friends of mine would listen to me more when I say, just get going, just sell a product, just sell a service because at the end of the day, it's getting started. It's getting experience. It's building. Those are the most important things. So absolutely. I think that, I think that people should go ahead with that. Okay. Well, that's pretty much a perfect ending to the story here. So Phil doesn't really want you to follow him on social media because he's not really on social media, right? Phil, Um, but thank you very much for coming over and sharing what you did share. Uh, very good, very valuable. This is a successful business owner who really made it and he did it the right way. And that's why he's so successful. Uh, you can check out more interviews like this on businessmanager.com, or you can apply to work with me directly to learn how to build an agency business. I don't teach e-commerce by the way. So thank you again, Phil, and, uh, see you at your next party that you organize.